Hi guys, it's Matty here with Hey Press 2010, and today I'm going to be showing you how to 3D motion track using Buju and put 3D text in to a video using Cinema 4D. All right. So, start off. I'm going to show you my video. Okay, and you can see that it's got a really, really clear floor plane, and this helps a lot. As well, it's got tons of different shades of shades of color. So when you're tracking it, it'll track all these different like specs. All right. But say if you were trying to motion track a piece of paper, you'd only get four tracking points because it's all the same, alright? So try and get something which like varies in colour. Okay, so first step, you have to break this down into an image sequence, alright? And you can do this using um, Sony Vegas or After Effects or something, but I'm going to use After Effects today, alright? So you want to drag your video into After Effects, and you see here, it's the frame rate, FPS, alright? It's 23.976, alright? And if yours is this, It'd be okay in here and Buju, but when you put it into Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D only accepts 24 frames per second, and if you leave it like this, it won't match up. So, if only if you have this frame rate, you want to change it. All right, you want to go in here, and you're going to go into Interpret Footage, and then go to Main. Okay, and then check here, and just write 24. Okay, and then just click OK. I'll just press enter, alright? And then you drag this down onto the timeline. So now it's 24 frames per second. Alright? And then if you scrub through, it's all there. Alright? So you want to go to composition, add to render queue. You can leave the render settings the same. You can mess with them if you want, but there's no need to. I'll put module, click on that, change it from AVI to JPEG sequence. Alright? And then change output to. I would just change it to your desktop because it's easy. And Alright, this is a must. You have to make a new folder and save it in there. Otherwise, I right, when I, when I click render, if I go to the desktop, otherwise, all these photos are gonna get put on your desktop and it'll be a pain in the ass. Alright, so just leave all this to render out. Depending on how long your video is, it take the longer your video, the longer it'll take. But mine's mine's going quite fast as you can see. And if you look here, right, there's 454 in brackets. And that's how many frames it has to render out, like in my video, all right. And before, when it said the frame rate appear, remember that. But if you forgot it, you can come to the desktop, right-click your video, go to detail. I mean, go to properties even. Click on details. And if you look here, frame rate is 23 frames per second. All right. Say so like I've changed mine to 24, so I remember the 24. But if your frame rate is 30 or 60. Just remember that because when we're going to Buju, which is the next step, you'll have to enter your frame rate. Alright. So this should be nearly done. 240 frames. Alright. Alright, so now all this is rendered out, you can just cross out of this, alright? You don't need to save it. And you should have tons of photos. I have 453, alright? So now the next step is to go into Buju. So just open up Buju. And click import sequence. Alright, and find where you saved it to, and this is quite tricky because it doesn't actually have like just a desktop option, it's really annoying, but find desktop, alright, and then go into that folder, and you want to select, alright, it's not 0001, it's just 0000, the exact first photo, alright, this one, alright, just select that, and then frame rate, alright, so ours was 24, alright, just remember that, click apply, but you see when you click apply, it sets it back to 25. So we want to go to 24, click apply, all right, and now it should stick. And this is the same for all frame rates, all right? And close. So now if we scrub through, it's actually got the video in, even though it only selected one picture. Okay, so you want to click track features when this is at the beginning, all right? Track features. If you go to advanced, you can see all these little red dots are motion tracking points. And you can imagine if you had a piece of paper, there would be hardly any. But if you feel that there isn't enough dots, you can just crank up the sensitivity a bit, and you'll get more. All right. But I'm gonna leave mine there because I had enough. Okay. So just click start. And depending on how long your video is, the longer it'll take. All right. But you can see it's starting to track all the points by putting red crosses on them. And hopefully, when this is done, when you sc like scrub through, all these points should like stick to the floor. So I'm going to come back when this is all done. Alright, so now it's finished motion tracking. And if you scrub through, 
all the points should be all the way through the video and stick like this. And that looks pretty cool. Anyway, all right. So now you want to go camera solve, and this is basically the same thing as this, but it'll change all of these red track points into yellow and blue camera solve points, and there'll be less of them, right? Because they kind of merge them. So click on camera solve, check optimize camera path smoothness, and then all you do is just click start. All right. And I think I think this takes a little bit longer than the camera solve, but just just bear with it. All right. So I'll come back to you again when this is finished. All right, so now you can see that it's much the same as the track features, but it's like yellow and blue points, all right? So the next step, which everyone hates and I used to hate and I used to like always fail at it, is scene geometry, all right? And if you got this step and just think, oh no, just bear with it, because hopefully this video will explain it and you'll be able to get it, right? So you have to add coordinate from hint, and then origin, right? This means in the middle. But you do this last, so you want to change the type to Z axis, alright? Or Z axis if you're American, alright? So that means going backwards. So, yeah, Z axis goes backwards, X axis goes along, and if you need it, your Y axis goes up, but we won't be needing it a day, alright? Because we haven't got any walls or anything. So, Z axis. So you want to select one point, and then press Control, and you can go backwards and select another point, alright? So actually, I'll select one here. There you go, that, that's going backwards, alright? And then just click connect to selected. So then there's two, cracks, two tracks connected, alright? So you want to click off these two tracks by just clicking on the open space. And then add a coordinate from hint, so a new one, alright? And you want to change the type to X axis. And then we're going along this time. So just select any point. And then press control and select one over here. Connect to selected. And then add coordinate from hint and change the type to origin. But now, right, all these have two tracks, but origin is just in the middle, so we just need to select one in the middle and just connect connect to select it, alright? And if you have any problems with this, which you probably will have if it's your first time, just comment or personal message me or video comment or something and I'll help you, alright? Because I know how annoying it is. Alright, and now update coordinate uh, frame. Do that twice just in case it doesn't save. Close. And if you say add test object, alright? And hopefully, this ladybird should be in the middle, and it should stay still when you scrub through. Alright. There you go. So that means that my 3D text is going to stay still. Okay, that's cool. So now, export camera. Alright. So, file name. It's important that you do it this way, because say if you change this to 100, change this to like 100, change this to uh, Cinema 4D, and then if you go up here, it just changes back to one. All right, so you want to start from the top, go to desktop or wherever you want to save it. Um, to tutorial. All right, save. Change the export type to Cinema 4D. Um, uncheck this box, and change the one to a zero, and scale by scene. This is really important. Change this to a hundred. All right, hundred, and then just click save. Alright, so now you don't need this anymore, so just cross this off. Alright, so there you go. You now have this. Okay, the next step should be to open up in Cinema 4D. Alright, but Cinema 4D has a bug. So I'll open it up, you don't have to open it up. And what you'll notice is when I opened it up, all the points, alright, so just click OK, alright, all the points are tracked to the camera. So if I scrub through, these points should stay still on the ground, but they don't. So we need to fix this, so we'll cross out of this. <clears throat> you want to right click your Cinema 4D save, <clears throat> open with notepad, okay, and then you want to click Control F or go to edit, find, and find what, alright, so you want to type in this, this will be in the description for you just to copy and paste, it's minus 3.141593, alright, so just click find next, alright, cross that off, and you want to go up, so key minus point there right that delete the minus <coughs> copy just the zeros here so you want to copy this and then go down here and the thing which we just searched you want to highlight all of that and just right click paste all right and that's what you have to do and then you want you go up to edit replace search parent item 
Again, this is in the description. Space, one, and six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. And then copy this. Paste it in, replace with, and just change the one to a two. Like that, alright? If I'm going fast, just rewind the video, alright? Replace all. So that'll replace all of this with this. Just cross that off, and then make sure you save, alright? Otherwise, you'll have to go and do the whole thing again. <coughs> alright, so now you can open this up. Okay, so Lightwave 3D Import. You want to scale this by 10. Alright. So now, all the points, should there should be more of them. And if you scrub through, they should all be trapped to the floor. And that's how you do it. Okay. So now, you want to go create new material. Double click on this material. Texture, load image. And then, you can't load the movie. The uh, video clip, which we had before. But that sometimes doesn't work for me. So if it doesn't work... Just go into your image sequence, which were rendered out of After Effects, and much like we did in Buju, select the first one, open, click no, and then you want to click on this little image here, go to animation, and click calculate. And you notice that the frame rate is 24, because before we changed, if you had 23.976 frame rate, we changed it at 24, because this can only go to 24 or over, alright? So cross this off, and then you want to click here, hold, background. And then drag this material onto the background, like this. All right. So now, if you scrub through, all the points should match up with the video. Yep. Okay. So now you want to go here, click floor, and then mo graph, mo text. All right. So leave that for the minute. Drag this material onto the floor, and then change the projection to frontal, so it gets rid of all this repeating. All right, like this. But if you render it, you notice that it's dark. So you want to right click on floor. Go to Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing, um, uncheck self shadow and Background, co uh, check Composite and Background. So now the lighting should be normal, alright? Then you want to highlight uh, Floor and Mo Text, and you can rotate it. Click on the Rotate and rotate it using the green one to make it look real. Alright. So, put this in the middle. If it's on a slant, you can use the blue one, just uh, level it off a bit. Alright, so, now you can select the mode text, you can change the depth to around 80, that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to change the font, uh, ethnocentric, because I like that font. Whatever it is, there you go. Uh, change the text to whatever you want. Tutorial. Alright. So now, this is when you can like, personalise your font, do what you want with it. So I'm going to go into caps, start cap to fill it cap and end cap to fill it cap. Change the steps to 5, radius to 3 on both of them. Okay. And you, you shouldn't notice anything at the minute, but if you go materials, add new material, and I'm going to have a gradient, so you want to go to texture, gradient, and then you click on this little image here, and then you can double click on this arrow. Um, I am going to have light blue and then if you click on this arrow uh, dark blue so then you can see that it actually like merges in alright so now you want to go back to color go in this arrow copy channel check luminance and texture paste channel alright and then now you can add reflections so I'm going to turn all the reflection down to nothing but then go in texture for now and have this about 30-ish, 30 35 and then you should get some realistic reflections, alright? So, as well, I'm going to have a black colour and you'll see what I mean because I'm going to drag this, drag both the colours on, alright? Like this but you can see, it's all black, so you want a selection you can either change this to C1 which will change just the front like this or, or you can change it to R1 where it's the caps alright so switch the materials around Oop, what's happened make sure you have your materials the right way around first though okay there we go so if you render that 
you have just black around the edge and it looks pretty clean all right and if this is looking too bright and not realistic you can just go in here and turn the brightness down all right so once you've done all this and you render it it doesn't look real at all all right so you want to add some shadows you can if you have light coming through the window or something and the shadows and everything else in the room are like really prominent you can add a light like this all right and then like you can drag it up and then go to shadows change the shadow mode to shadow soft and you can mess around with the density i usually have about 80 and about 200 but for this it's not going to look real so i'm going to delete the light i'm going to go up to render settings here go in effect ambient occlusion change the contrast to uh, 35 and the maximum real length to 500 and then if we cross this off this should just give realistic shadows alright so I think the shadows look more realistic than the other ones to be honest so if you scrub through there we go I think those shadows look quite real so I'm gonna stick with these shadows so if we go back and as well actually you can see that this is covering because this is actually in front of the video so you can see it's covering the fireplace here so I'm gonna make the text smaller otherwise halfway through the video it's not gonna look good so just go to object just change the height down okay so that should be alright so I think we're done here now so you want to click up here to render settings um, output you can change this to whatever you want resolution about 200 and um, frame range is important all frames so it renders everything um, you can go to save change the format I'm gonna go quick time options you can mess around with that if you want but I'm gonna keep it the same um, yeah I think that's it so you can choose where you want to save it to I'm gonna change mine to tutorial finish okay so save that and then if you cross this off and just click the middle button should start a render all right and um, thanks for watching guys so if you have any comments any you need any help just comment or message me and I will get back to you all right